Part of meter ownership is preventive maintenance. And from time to time you might notice that you have to replace the battery or the fuses inside. And that's what we're going to do here. Your meter may have three or four screws depending upon the meter, so refer to the owner's manual and it'll tell you the exact procedure to follow. This one had three, so I've removed the screws. Next, take your fingernails and hook under the front of the meter and remove the upper case half and set it aside. Now located inside the meter are several important areas. First of all, you'll notice that there are rubber O-rings around the input connectors and around the case half. Make sure those are in good condition because that protects your meter in case any moisture gets splashed on it from entering inside and damaging it. Another area is the battery. Good 9 volt alkaline battery is great for it. Now be careful when you go to remove it. Don't simply pull on it. You could disconnect the wires where it connects to the board. So use your thumb, pry against it, there you go. We also have some fuses. The fuses are there for protection of the amp circuit in case too much current goes through the meter. It won't damage the meter, it'll simply open the fuse. Make sure you use the fuses that are designed specifically for your meter. So refer to your owner's manual for that. We also have an electronic shield right here. This protects the meter from electronic high voltage uh, interference from other coil packs under the hood. For instance, on a DIS coil pack or from a fuel injector. So make sure that you don't remove that or damage it in any way. Now you'll also notice that there are some potentiometers here. I know it's tempting, but don't rotate those. Those are for use only by qualified personnel when you go ahead and get your meter recalibrated. Similar to a torque wrench, you wouldn't want to use a torque wrench if you don't know the torque settings. You don't want to use your meter if you think that it's out of calibration. So typically, every two years or so, send it back into a qualified service center and they can recalibrate it. One of the first steps to become successful using your meter is to become familiar with its function and its operation. Now you'll notice something in common on all of these meters. They have rotary knobs, they have buttons, they have a number of input jacks. Well, starting right over here on the most basic meter, you'll see two input jacks. One is common, the other one's a voltage or ohms or a diode input. Now all the meters share these, but you'll also notice that they, they have a number of other jacks. For instance, if it has four jacks, it may step up to measuring current. Remember those fuses we checked a few minutes ago. It might also have, for instance, on the Fluke 78, it may have the capability to measure RPM. You would use that jack to plug in the external trigger input and connect it around a plug wire. Even some of the more advanced meters have other capabilities that you should be aware of. For instance, on the Fluke 89, we have an infrared port. That'll allow it to communicate with a computer and log readings for over a thousand times. So read your manual. Become familiar with the meter. Okay, next step, we're going to take a look at the rotary switch positions. You can see on this meter we have several positions along the bottom. First of all, we have the off position where you'd want to place the meter even though it will automatically shut off the display if you let it set for a period of time. That keeps the battery alive for you a lot longer. But you also have the volts and the ohms, diode, and continuity functions. Now you can notice that those are in white and also in yellow. Take a look up above at the push buttons. You see the white and yellow used in these buttons? Those would be used in conjunction with the rotary switch position in order to gain access to that particular function. You can see on this meter, the Fluke 73 Series 3, we've added a couple things. Well, the main thing, current. Take a look down at the bottom of the rotary dial. You can see the amps DC and amps AC position. And of course, it added the two other input jacks. Now the other functions remain pretty much the same. You have volts AC, volts DC, you have a millivolt position, and that's primarily used for your accessories that you want to run on the meter, such as your external current or your pressure or temperature. You also have ohms function, you have a continuity beeper function and diode test, and you can also see the yellow writing down there. Well, that refers to the button that's in the middle, and you can access a touch hold function, and we'll talk about that a little more in a few seconds. 
The Fluke 78 is an automotive specific meter. Now you can see on this meter that it has several positions around the rotary knob and some which we haven't talked about yet such as temperature and we even have dwell and some other items. Well let's start at the top. The volt AC function and volt DC, dwell, RPM, resistance, even temperature and amps, you can see where they're written in white. What's unique to this meter also is its ability to measure frequency, for instance frequency AC, frequency DC. We can also measure dwell directly or we can measure duty cycle. RPM is another function that's widely used and you would use your input jacks at the bottom to plug in your external trigger input. The 87 Series 3 coveted by a lot of electronic technicians worldwide. This is a great meter, 250 microsecond glitch detect. It's great for finding those problems that other meters will definitely miss. Now you can see that to get all that power, it has some additional buttons along the top. Now the rotary switch accesses most of the functions we just talked about, from volts AC, DC, millivolts if you're using some external adapters, resistance and diode test and so on and so forth. However, the, the buttons along the top access the min-max data recording function. It can manually range the instrument. It can also activate a touch hold segment. We also have the ability to turn the continuity beeper on and off and even perform a relative function where we can subtract one reading from another automatically. The Fluke 88 is an automotive specific meter and it has some additional functions. You can see that it has a backlit display. It also has millisecond pulse width measurements for fuel injectors and even an RPM function. The RPM function would work with an external trigger pickup on a spark plug wire and give you RPM readings directly on the instrument. The Fluke 89, the best of the best. This one has a dual reading display and you can see on the rotary position dial, it has a lot of auxiliary functions. Now many of these are printed in blue. You can see the blue button right over here. This is the button you would press to go ahead and access those additional functions. Now it also has a yellow button. This one's designed to access some of the function tests that are above the soft keys in the upper section of the meter, such as its fast min max, again 250 millionths of a second data recording. Also a logging function which will record over the thousand readings and you can even set the meter with its own time clock set to your time zone so it'll tell you when a signal has changed. We just talked about the rotary switch position which tells the meter what to measure. We've also gone through how to hook up to the circuit with the input jacks. But you know your true window into the electronic world is the display. You need to find out what is the meter measuring. It needs to tell you something. Now on the display there's some very, very important items that you really need to pay attention to. First of all, you have the digital area right up on top which updates at four times a second. Now that's fast, but what's even faster is 40 times a second. Okay, 10 times faster and that's the digital bar graph that runs at the bottom. Now that's really great if you have some fast changing circuits like an oxygen sensor or a throttle position sensor, something like that. Another thing to pay attention to are a number of the different icons that appear around the display. They might indicate what mode you're in, for instance data recording modes. It might even indicate if you have a weak battery on the instrument that's in need of replacement. Also an important thing is to take a look at any of the enunciators that appear to the right of the digital display. That can identify if there's a thousand involved. For instance, if there's a K after your reading, it might mean 1,000 ohms or 1,000 volts. You don't want to confuse that. Also, you have decimal places. Count your amount of decimal places. Anytime you see a decimal and then the reading, it's less than zero. So go to the manual, review the manual, make sure you're fully familiar with that, and then we'll go ahead and go over to the simulator board. Let's make some measurements.